Greetings. This is September 4th at 10 p.m. It was a very hot day and a good one to maybe play in a shady sandbox, drink out of a bird bath, and have a snooze under the junipers. However, if you were on Highway 1 between Boston Bar and Hell's Gate, you may have been delayed. There was a grass fire reported on Dry BC, and uh, social media picked it up about a half hour ahead of time and uh, it, there were crews on the way dealing with that. The VIIRS system on the Google KML bundle link below has been having some issues, very hard to load up. However, we have our version through the NRC, the uh, very qualified people there have put together uh, an interactive mapping infrared system linked below and uh, we can zoom in and take a look at where the most recent activity is on the northeast flank. All the other areas appear to be holding and we'll take a look at an overview but first let's see if there's any new movement as of 7:40 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm not seeing a lot of change. Uh, there's still that volatility around the Rayfield River and moving north to uh, Sheridan West it appears to be north of the road. I am looking at six uh, infrared spots that have appeared to be on the approach towards the su southern area of Sheridan Lake. However, we have had a wind shift. It's uh, moving from the north and it should roll over to the east and that is a good wind situation for this area. If we look at the 12 hour and less infrared. I'm only seeing two hotspots pop up there. There is very likely to be more infrared displayed and it's just not showing up. We have a lot of smoke cover in the area and we'll take a look at the NASA world view and you can see that. We've moved south westwards. We're looking at the area south of Green Lake. Most of the hotspots appear to be going up the ray field and then heading north towards the southwest end of Sheridan Lake. I'm not seeing a lot of activity around Lake of the Woods or Little Green Lake or around Watch Lake. Uh, again, smoke may be obscuring it. I am seeing that volatility on the southwestern flank of Mount Jim. And when we go to the NASA satellite photo, that'll be quite evident. There are some plumes coming off of that area. Let's move south and look at the central region of the Elephant Hill wildfire. We're looking at High Heum, Loon Lake, Vidette, Watch Lake. I'm not seeing a lot of activity other than those core fire pockets to the east, northeast, and southeast of High Heum. Uh, when we look at the 6-hour, 12-hour maps, only four hot spots that are being displayed. Again, a lot of smoke was coming off of this region, but at least it lets us see where the concentrations are and where the most volatility is. Other areas may be smoldering. Again, looking at the VIIR system, we see the red on the eastern fringes. Now with this east breeze coming in, they should be blowing back in on themselves. And if we zoom in towards the ray field, and south of Sheridan Lake, we can see those four hot spots extending. I click on the most eastward one. It was showing up at approximately 1.40 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. They're measured in UTC, so just subtract seven hours and you've got the time. Zooming in around the ray field, I'd like you to see how large these spots are and the area that they would encompass the fire may be in that specific region but we need to get verification uh, from professional heat mapping sources and that's through BC wildfire so keep checking their alerts and bulletins and check uh, their link to their files and they have their updated perimeter map to the NASA world view I've zoomed right in to the area between uh, Green Lake and Sheridan Lake Green Lakes on your left hand side Sheridan on the right Watch Lake is about the middle of the screen and we can see there's been a lot of smoke coverage but the movement is now going from the northeast down to the southwest and filling up the valley around the Bonaparte the Loon Lake and there's a lot of smoldering going on in there I am seeing plumes coming off the southwestern end of Mount Jim 
and a lot of plumes coming from the east of Pressy. That's where that volatility was being displayed. I'm also noticing a lot of smoke and haze a little further northeast of Young Lake. That's in the lower center of your screen than I would have expected uh, going, towards Mount, uh, going towards Egan Lake. That is concerning because it's not showing up on infrared. So I'm just going to make an assumption that uh, smoke has gone in that direction and now it's being blown back. However, we need verification. So you want to check the updated perimeter mapping at the BC Wildfire link below in the description. There's a little arrow below this viewer. Just toggle that and the description folds down. You'll see lots of resource links. Check them out and uh, you can find out the information that I'm seeing on this Android screen. If we zoom out and look at the province, other than uh, some infrared indicated around Kleena Clean and uh, north of Risky Creek, it would be hard to tell that there was a forest fire going on in the central Caribou. Uh, it looks much cooler in that area. I'm not seeing any real smoke. Uh, there is most likely smoldering going on. Uh, they've had some cooler weather, a little bit of moisture. Yes, there is some haze. However, uh, the conditions appear significantly more clear than they have been in a long time. Very good news and kudos to our BC Wildfire crews for what they've done. However, uh, in southern British Columbia, near Manning Park, uh, near the Rockies, in southwestern, in the Selkirks, lots of activity still going on and lots of smoke. It's currently drifting southwards. Let's jump over to Windy right now and look at the wind models on the 22 kilometer range. Uh, we're seeing two kilometers an hour coming from the northeast. And this shows some meandering, but this is not picking up as detailed information. If we s shift to the second computer model at nine kilometer range, uh, we're seeing coming from the northeast at approximately eight kilometers an hour. Where you see the brighter green, that's where the wind speed is going faster. Where you see the darker blue areas, the wind speed is going much slower. So there's going to be variation. It's slower currently down in the south of the Elephant Hill wildfire. It is quicker up on the northern plateaus, the Bonaparte and the Fraser Plateau. Looking at the forecast, uh, we should be seeing the wind shifting and coming from the east at a much slower velocity. Then around noon, it's going to shift and come from the southeast and increase in velocity. Over the afternoon, the peak 3 o'clock breeze and then again die down. We'll have a quieter evening and then I'm looking at a potential wind event coming on Thursday. Just before those rain clouds come in, it should shift and start coming from the north 15 kilometers an hour. It could gust up to 40 45 kilometers an hour around supper time 6 p.m. Let's take a look at the Beto Tree webcam pointing southwest on Sheridan Lake and the link is below. A very valuable and vital service that they're providing. This is the activity I'm trying to confirm on infrared. It looks very close. Shifting over to the Begbie cam, I can see a little bit of lingering sunset on the horizon. Tells me there's not a lot of haze in that direction, nor should there be uh, with this north breeze that we've been having. That's been cooperative with the efforts of the wildfire crews and it should be pushing that fire back on itself. So we're watching for that wind. Should be coming tomorrow morning from the southeast. Uh, around 8 kilometers an hour through the day picking up and we want to be prepared check the bulletins check the alerts verify your position if you're west of these fire flanks the message is everyone please be extra safe the wind is moving around and I do appreciate all your confirmation on wind speeds and data that's uh, fantastic and when you're also very busy Thank you for watching and maybe keep somebody on watch for the next, uh, you know, shift back and forth. Keep somebody with their nose to the breeze.